Hey guys, this is Tigger, and today I want to record a quick video about how to rig mesh to fit the Teagle Horse skeleton for Second Life. So when you get this uh, rigging file from me, it'll look something like this. And the first thing you need to do, obviously, is to create a mesh that fits around the horse's body. I borrowed this blanket from Abaddon of Abaddon Arts, and I'm going to use this today to show you how to rig to the horse. So as you can see, the blanket is nicely fitted all the way around the horse's body, and we're ready to rig it. The first thing you want to do is have this blanket right-clicked, and then hold Shift and right-click the skeleton so that you're selecting both things at the same time, and hit Control p And you're going to get these options here. The one that you want to choose is to set armature to form with empty groups. So I'm going to select that. And now, when you click the blanket and come over here in this modifiers tab, you can see that there is an armature modifier now. There's only one of them. You need to make sure before you export that there is only one armature modifier or else it won't work. But it doesn't have any weights on it yet. So in order to copy the weights from the horse so that it's going to move as well as it can with the horse's body, what you're going to need to do, first off, let's open the T menu by hitting T. Um, and we're going to put both the horse and the blanket into weight paint mode. So there's the horse, there's the blanket. Now what you want to do is right click the horse in weight paint mode and select the bone, each of the bones one at a time that you need to copy weights from. And you can kind of figure that out by clicking around. You can see the horse lights up where it has weights. And you just want to get weights from everywhere that seems to have color underneath whatever object you're rigging. So in this case, any color that's underneath the blanket, we want to copy weights from there. So we'll probably be copying from these two shoulder bones and the spine and these two hip bones. It seems about right. So. I'm going to take the first bone, I'm going to take this shoulder bone, right click it while the horse is in weight paint mode, then shift and right click the blanket, and the blanket should also be in weight paint mode, and I'm going to click this shoulder bone again. And this is an error, I think, of the newest version of Blender 2.77. It used to work so that weight paint transfer would transfer all bones in the skeleton all at the same time. It doesn't work like that anymore. Now you have to do it one bone at a time. So it's kind of annoying, but it doesn't tend to take too long. So you, you right click the horse, click the bone that you're copying, shift right click the blanket and click right click the bone that you're copying again. Then you come over here in the T menu to tools, transfer weights, and you click transfer weights. And you can see that these weights pop up automatically. So I'm gonna do that for every bone here that I need to transfer from. Shift right click the blanket, right click the bone, transfer weight. Changing the bone, shift right click the blanket, right click the bone, transfer weights. And you need to remember every time to click the bone that you're trying to transfer to, because if you do not, you see how it's still highlighting bones from this chest bone? If you don't change the bone, and see, I didn't do it. I had to shift right click. <sighs> okay. So that was um, chest bone. Transfer weights. Transfer weights. And so you'll see the weights just sort of start to move down the body. Oh, and see, I did it wrong again. So I did not change the bone back here when I clicked on the horse. So let me fix that now. And you get kind of quick with it sometimes and you make simple mistakes. But again, it's very quick and easy to fix. Very quick and easy to do. And there we have it. Now we have a rigged blanket. So when we go to export this blanket, it will fit the horse and move with the horse. So we're going to do that right now. We'll put this back in object mode. Put you back in object mode too. 
going to go, well, I'm using Avastar to export this. You don't have to use Avastar for rig mesh, but I do um, because I already have it and I find it convenient to use it. But, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to vertex groups. And one of the things Avastar is going to yell at me about is about having too many vertex groups. And this is one reason why Avastar is handy, because it does yell at you. Um, but I'll go ahead and try and export it to show you. And it's going to yell at you and say you have however many bones, 159 bones probably, and the limit is 110 bones. So you're going to come over here to this vertex group panel, and with Bento we have so, so many new bones, and we really don't need all of them. So I'm just going to start at the bottom, and I'm going to start removing things that I know I don't need. I definitely don't need the hind limbs, or the groin, or the tail. I don't need any feet or knees. Um, I do need the hip though, but I don't need these volume bones, which are in all capital letters. We definitely don't need those. We definitely don't need wings. Definitely don't need hands. There's some more volume bones we can remove. So just go through and remove a bunch of bones that you know for sure that you're not using. Um, if you want to be really thorough, you can remove all of the bones that you're not using and just leave the ones that you've actually rigged to, which is probably the better way to do it, actually, but I'm just quite trying to be pretty quick right now. So, removing a bunch of these bones. Okay, so that's a bunch of bones gone. Let's try again to export it. And now it worked. So when we're going to import this into Second Life, and build, upload mesh model, and I put this in my downloads. We'll see it appear right here. You can check it really quickly with skin weights and make sure that it doesn't look funky. And we're going to check avatar attachment because this is an attachment and includes skin weights. Now for anything that you rig to this horse that is not a tail, you are going to leave alone include joint positions and then you'll leave alone lock scale obviously because it doesn't even light up unless you check joint positions. So anything that is not a tail should have no joint positions. It will inherit its joint positions from the horse. So we'll calculate and upload. And then I can add that and it will appear beautifully on my horse. And if I ask my horse to animate, it will animate with me and everything will move like it should. And that looks good. So when you're making a tail, I said that tails do have joint positions on this horse. So you're going to do the same thing. I, I just put together this quick little tail sort of thing. You're going to set this up the same way. You're going to right click, shift right, oh, not that. Shift right click the skeleton, control P, set with empty groups. Let me set this back in pose mode. And now you're going to set this tail and the demo tail both in weight paint mode. And the demo tail in the rigging file is the long tail that drags on the ground. So you'll see that there's this sixth bone down here which drags on the ground. If you are making a tail that drags on the ground you would rig to this sixth bone. If not you would just rig to these top five. So since my tail doesn't drag on the ground, I'm just going to rig to these top five bones. And I'm going to transfer weights, transfer weights, transfer 
transfer, 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 and also once on the pelvis. Transfer. So now I have this tail. Again, I'm going to have to go through and remove some extra vertex groups. I do need the tail, definitely. I probably don't need anything other than tail and pelvis for this, so I can go through and remove a whole bunch because I did not rig to anything other than tail and pelvis. That's probably fine. I, if I were being thorough, I would remove all of the other bones, but I'm in a hurry for the sake of this video. Um, where did it go? Here it is. Export. I'm going to call this tail build upload mesh model. Choose my tail. Now this, I'm also going to call an avatar attachment and I'm going to put skin weights and joint positions on this. I don't need to define a Z offset because that's defined in the horse's body. And I can again oh, check skin weights, check joints, calculate weights, upload. And now when I detach my tail and add this new one, you'll see it deforms correctly. If you do not include skin weights, if you just up, I mean, if you don't include joint positions, if you just upload it with skin weights, you'll see that when you wear your tail, it'll look crinkled and strange. So if you're seeing this, what you need to do is check joint positions. And then your tail will look beautiful and it should animate exactly right. And that should be all you need to know to rig mesh for the horse, for the Teagle horse in Second Life. So I hope you enjoyed, happy building, and good luck.